up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you have not already hit that subscribe button, you need to definitely go ahead and do that just so you can stay up to date with all the things that we've got going on in the vlog. Whether you are a dance teacher or a dance mom or a dancer or just somebody who is interested in learning more about all the stuff that goes on in the vlog. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that is going like absolutely crazy right now and that is COVID-19 or the coronavirus. So I know that every single one of you have more than likely at least heard the term COVID-19. If you haven't heard COVID-19, then you have definitely heard of the coronavirus. It is um, basically an upper respiratory virus that is going around. And in my personal opinion, I feel like the media is making it out to be a death sentence. Um, so I just want to like give more information on that. Um, I've pulled information straight from the CDC's website um, and then we're going to talk about how it is affecting the dance world right now and probably how it's going to affect it within the next couple of months. Um, so the coronavirus or COVID-19 is um, a virus that um, makes you have like upper respiratory issues, you run a fever, all that kind of stuff. Um, from the research that I have done People who are over the age of 60 or 65 or people who have already had underlying medical conditions are usually the ones that are going to be at risk um, for having a severe case of COVID-19 if they get it. Um, unfortunately, right now, the, the like mass hysteria that is going on is that a lot of people think that if you get it, you're going to die. And that's simply not the case. Um, unfortunately that's what the media is making it out to be is this like ridiculous thing that's going on right now um that everybody's freaking out over so um like if you have tried to go to the store um here recently like all of the Clorox wipes are um out all of the hand sanitizer is gone and for some reason if you live in Kentucky I don't know if this is anywhere else like the toilet paper is sold out y'all like what in the actual heck is up with that like why do you need toilet paper so bad like really like it I don't know it's just very strange so um I've actually pulled some information from the CDC's website as far as prevention and treatment and I'm just gonna go ahead and like go over this now now this is I'm reading word for word from their website if you're interested in reading it more for yourself or looking at like looking into it a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and link this um the CDC's website that talks about COVID-19 or the coronavirus in the description of this video so you can do your own research so um prevention they just have like bullet points and um which I'll literally just touch my face and that's like one of the things on here um but I definitely like just used hand sanitizer but that's okay um so prevention it says avoid close contact with people who are sick that's obviously a no-brainer and also another no-brainer is that if you are sick you need to keep your sick butt home okay so that's like just with anything in general um not just COVID-19 that's literally a flu or strep or stomach virus or any of that kind of stuff like just keep yourself at home. Um, the second thing is avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth. I just touched my nose. It's okay. Literally just sanitized before I started this video. The third thing is to stay home when you're sick. Literally just said that. Like, stop putting other people at risk um, for, like, getting whatever you have if you have something that is contagious. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that you are contagious usually 24 to 48 hours before you start exhibiting any kind of symptoms. So, by the time you have exhibited, ex exhibited symptoms, you more than likely have already spread whatever you have. So, it's really important for all of us to be very proactive about stuff like that. Even if you feel, like, just not very good, it's probably best just to go home, go ahead and like stay home, keep your dancer home. Um, if you're a teacher, if you're a dance teacher, call in for a sub or cancel your classes because you literally don't want to spread any of this kind of stuff. Um, the next thing is, is cover your, your cover your cough or sneeze with the tissue and then throw it in the trash can. That again is common sense. If you, this is just me, I'm not reading from this anymore. If you do not have a tissue, like if you're in the middle of teaching class or if you have a dancer, um, encourage them to do the Dracula cough. That's this, you know, we, we do that in class all the time. Like our kids know that that's how you cough or sneeze. And then you can go have them wash their hands or wash their arm or sanitize, like that kind of stuff. So like tissues aren't always gonna be readily available for you to use. 
The next thing is, is clean and disinfect frequently touched ob objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or a wipe. Now, this is the thing that is driving me crazy, um, is that a lot of people think that they need to go out and buy like medical grade um, cleaning supplies, and that's simply not the case. You can literally clean just as effectively with a lot of the stuff that you have under your cabinet, you know, in the sink, like under your sink in your kitchen. Um, it, it cleans and sanitizes just as well as any of these like medical grade things that you think that you're buying um so stop buying all this stuff that you really don't need just use the stuff you already got at home so the next thing is um is their recommendations on using a face mask and this is another thing that is driving me just bonkers because I feel like so many people think that if they wear a face mask like it's literally going to protect them and it's not so I'm reading word for word. It says the CDC does not recommend that people who are well wear a face mask to prevent to prevent themselves from respiratory diseases, including COVID-19. That's the coronavirus. So if you are well, you do not need a face mask. So please stop stocking up on all of this stuff that you do not need. The next thing is, is it says face masks should be used by people who show symptoms of COVID-19 to help prevent the spread of the disease to others. The use of face masks is also crucial for healthcare workers and people who are taking care of someone in close settings at home or in a healthcare facility. So what you are doing, if you are healthy by buying up all of these face masks, is actually preventing these people who actually need them from having access to them. So please stop buying them if you are healthy. You do not need them. It's not going to prevent you, you know, 100% for, like, from getting it. So the last thing is, and to me, this is just common sense. If it's not common sense for you, like, I'll pray for you, like, who, Lord bless it, okay, so it's about washing your hands, okay, wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, duh, before eating, again, duh, or after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. You guys, like, to me, that is common sense. But what I've realized in this world, there's no such thing as common sense anymore. Because the things that you think that are common sense are not. So, if you are not already practicing, like, very good hand washing hygiene, you need to get in the habit of doing that. Running your hands under water after you use the bathroom is not washing your hands. That's literally, you're just getting your hands wet. You need to make sure that you're washing your hands for at least 20 seconds like effectively and then the last thing on here it says that if you do not have soap and water readily available use an alcohol based sanitizer with at least 60 percent alcohol always wash your hands when soap and water with your hands if your hands are visibly dirty if you are buying hand sanitizer and it is not at least 60 percent alcohol it is not going to be as effective or effective at all at sanitizing your hands properly so like i know that a lot of us use like these cutesy little um like ones from bath and body works let's just see okay so now this is from bath and body works i got it i like just keep it at my desk because it smells really good this is actually the alcohol um active ingredient is 68 percent so this i'm not sure if it's like gonna focus or not uh, there we go okay i don't know i don't even know if you can see it i don't know how people do that crap um it's 68 percent alcohol so this these are actually effective now there's other hand sanitizers out there that are not going to be as effective okay so you need to make sure that if you do not have access to soap and water you need to make sure that you are using like effective hand sanitizer so that is about preventing it so let's talk about what's going on in the dance world right now so i got on today's monday i got on the dance mom chat group last night just to kind of like browse i had posted something uh, about like photogenic entries that i had a question about and i happened to see this big long post that had like 300 and some on comments on it and it was about um events and venues or not venues competitions canceling because of the coronavirus and so here's the thing uh, there's mass hysteria going on right now. Um, if the competition feels the need, if they're in an area where there has been several confirmed cases of this, yes, it is probably best for them to go ahead and cancel that competition. Now, 
fingers crossed that they're actually reimbursing all of these people, um, you know, their money um, because the people aren't the ones pulling out of the competitions. Um, the second thing is, is that sometimes it's the actual venue that is canceling and not the competition. So I think a lot of people need to be aware of that, um, that sometimes it's the, uh, the like event venue in general and not the actual competition. If the venue cancels and there's nothing that the competition can do about that and they are in return forced to um, cancel and hopefully do refunds. Um, again, this is something like new that's going on. Um, and so I'm not really sure. I haven't done a lot of research as far as like what the competitions are doing um, as far as reimbursement for if they have to cancel. Um, the next thing is, is that if you are attending a competition, like it hasn't been canceled because of like a coronavirus scare, or any of that kind of stuff, you need to make sure that you are taking those preventative steps for making sure that you and your dancer or you as a teacher are staying healthy in general, not just against COVID-19 or the coronavirus, but anything that you can get that is contagious. And the biggest thing that I have seen, which it kind of upsets me that like this is being turned into like mass hysteria, is that the flu goes around so badly every single year, like during competition season. It literally starts at the beginning of competition season and follows it until the end of competition season. I have seen kids that I have heard them say they, they tested positive for the flu None of my kids, because we would lose our minds if any of our kids did this, because we are germaphobes and we are very proactive about this kind of stuff. But kids from other studios, they will be wearing a mask. You can hear them say, I tested positive for the flu. And they are still there competing, like risking getting all of these other kids sick. Like what in the actual heck, dance moms and dancers, stop bringing your sick kids to these competitions. And that's for sickness in general. You have absolutely no idea if there is a dancer there with a compromised immune system because there is a variety of illnesses that can go around that makes you have a compromised immune system, okay? And I like don't think that I could live with myself like as a parent if I took my child like knowing that they were sick and then having a child that has a compromised immune system getting whatever sickness my dancer had and then then end, end up number one getting very sick or two even potentially passing away like I don't think that I could live with that because that's just insanity to me so if you are sick as an adult do not attend if your dancer is sick, do not risk taking them, okay? That's with sickness in general. It does not matter to me. Like, yeah, people may be pissed off at you for a little while if you decide to, like, pull your dancer from that competition. Like, if you go, like, to another studio, my studio, we will not be mad. We are always very proactive about our kids' health, um, about our other dancers' health, you know, like, just everybody's health in general. We do not, like, we will re-block stuff, we'll rework it, we'll redo the choreography, we'll redo formations like we'll have it answer and learn new parts like if we absolutely have, have to but their health comes first and please do not risk other people's health because your child is sick and you unfortunately have made the decision for them to go ahead and bring bring them while they are still contagious so please stop doing that now, at the dance studio level, um, there's a lot of different things that you can do to prevent um, sickness in general from being spread. Again, I'm not just talking about COVID-19 or the coronavirus. I'm talking about like all contagious illnesses. So, um, I, if you have not followed the vlog in the past, I, I have like let, let you guys know um, on multiple occasions that we actually have hand sanitizing stations that are mounted to our walls outside of every single um, studio room that we have at our studio. We also have them in the, in the bathroom, outside of the bathroom. We have them everywhere. Um, and we have trained our kids to know before you step foot into that room, you have got to get hand sanitizer. So other things that we are also doing, um, and we started doing this way, you know, before this COVID-19 scare, coronavirus scare, um, and we started doing this even before the start of flu season this year, 
we sanitize and disinfect on a daily basis. Now, um, now that it is flu season, we are doing that even more. Um, so we go through, the kids have lockers or cubbies that they keep their stuff in. That is sanitized on a daily basis. We wipe it down, we spray it with Lysol, we get the doorknobs and the lights, uh, the light switches. And we also sanitize the hand sanitizing stations. And those are the dirtiest things because that's what the kids touch before their hands are clean. So we always make sure that we do that. Now, another thing that you need to sanitize that a lot of people don't take into consideration are the kids' props. Um, some of these may be a little bit harder to sanitize. Some of them may be as easy as just like wiping them down. If it's a washable material, definitely um, like wash it on a, um, like a routine basis if, it, if you can do that. Um, and this is something that like the kids touch that stuff all the time and it's not something that we think about cleaning all the time um, just in general. But we make sure that even if that prop does not get used for that specific routine on a daily basis, if it is out in the open where it could potentially be touched, we still give it a good wipe down. Um, for our acro room, we actually sanitize after every single class. Um, we keep a giant thing of um, gym wipes um, in our um, acro and tumbling room. And we have taught the kids how to wipe down. Um, all of the surfaces that can be wiped down and then we go back with Lysol. Because the thing is, is that if you have a kid that comes in at the very first class of the day that is exhibited, that is sick and doesn't even necessarily know that they're sick, and I'm talking about like stomach virus, flu, like anything that's contagious like that. If they come in at the very beginning of the day and it's not sanitized properly after they use it, then you run the risk of other kids um, picking up those germs that that kid left behind on all of those mats. Um, so definitely, definitely do that kind of stuff. Another thing that we have implemented here recently, um, with the younger girls is it's, it's really hard, but they're starting to get into the habit of not touching. Um, and I'm not talking about like when they're dancing, like that can't be avoided because you have partnering and lifts and all that kind of stuff. I'm just talking about like in a general like class atmosphere for like training and stuff like that. Um, we give air hugs right now or we give air high fives like but we and I love when my little ones come and love on me and it breaks my heart whenever I have to tell them like, you know, no, we're in our like bubbles right now. Um, we can't touch each other, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like I'm still very nice about it, but that definitely is something that you do want to encourage, um, like minimal touching, um, because they like germs can live on your clothes and all that kind of stuff. And I love my kids that they are disgusting. Um, as a lot of you guys know, we have a lot, a lot of little ones that are under the age of eight. Um, and they still have those nasty, um, little kid habits like picking their nose or even like putting their hands in their mouth or, you know, just that kind of stuff. So, um, they, are starting to learn that all uh, that we all carry germs and we don't want to share any of those germs like sometimes sharing is not caring <laughs> so um that's that's the biggest thing that we have started with the studio um as a studio owner or a studio teacher or somebody who is in charge of the studio you do not need to be afraid of canceling your classes because of illnesses um if you're gonna cancel you definitely need to make sure that you are going back and sanitizing and all that kind of stuff like before before you or when you decide to cancel um, if you need to hire somebody to come in to do that you can or you can just use like the regular methods that we use as far as you know what we do to sanitize like mopping and using Clorox and all that kind of stuff like you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that on a daily basis and then if you do have to close like you can go in and deep clean or like set up a schedule for like deep cleaning in general like we do so I am anxious to see how this is going to continue to affect um, the dance world. I know that like all of us like eat, sleep, and breathe dance competitions, but if they have to get canceled because of sicknesses, you know, that is definitely going to put like a damper on competition season this year. So definitely take, um, you know, take precautions if your kids are sick or if you are sick or as a teacher, you know, you're sick, any of that kind of stuff. Um, make sure you're sanitizing educate your kids on how to sanitize and stay healthy and like not touching right now and all that kind of stuff and hopefully all of this you know will not be as crazy for the next couple of weeks unfortunately I doubt that <laughs> um but we shall see so thank you for watching if you want to do your own research um as far as more information on COVID-19 or um 
the coronavirus same thing um then definitely check out the website that we have listed below with the cdc if you want more information on like influenza or the flu it's also listed on that website as well so thank you for watching stay healthy good luck with finding hand sanitizer in kentucky if you're in kentucky stop buying all the toilet paper okay like for real we like all of us need that so um thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and bye for now we'll see you later Thank mm -hmm. you.